Riding on the shoulders of the Apollo generation, the Artemis missions, or even SpaceX, will pave the way for humans to return to the moon, beginning the human exploration of Mars, and someday for humanity to reach the edges of our solar system and beyond. While the exploration of deep space is critical to advancing our understanding of so many unanswered questions about the universe and our place in it, it's equally as critical that the U.S. government and private industry work together to lead the commercialization of Low Earth Orbit, LEO, and capture the resulting massive new space economy. Sadly, the most popular broomstick in the United States, SpaceX Dragon, will not be produced anymore. That's when people are looking for another spacecraft, the highlight of which is the Dream Chaser. In fact, the Dream Chaser team is making huge progress for the first launch. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In April, the first Dream Chaser vehicle took shape. The first Dream Chaser, named Tenacity, was assembled at the Colorado headquarters, and at that point the vehicle structure was largely complete, but there's still more work to install the thermal protection system and other components. We have the wings on now, it really looks like a space plane, said Janet Cavandi, president of Sierra Space, during a panel at the AIAA Ascendex Texas Conference in Houston, April 28th, where she played a video showing work building the vehicle. And last month in a tweet, Sierra Space revealed that right now our Dream Chaser team is hard at work of fixing more than 2,000 hand-cut thermal tiles. We'll have more photos and close-ups of Tenacity coming soon. The engineers are using similar technology that was used to protect the space shuttle when it flew. A TPS is designed to protect the spacecraft from aerothermal heating when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, temperatures that can reach 1650 centigrade or 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. In the case of Dream Chaser, the TPS ensures a safe entry, descent, and runway landing. The TPS includes a coating made of various heat-resistant material. In the cases of both the Space Shuttle Orbiter and Dream Chaser, this coating is made of tiles. Dream Chaser is about a quarter the size of the Space Shuttle Orbiter and only needs 2,000 TPS tiles compared to the 24,000 used on the Space Shuttle. Fewer tiles are needed because the craft is smaller, but the tiles are also bigger. Dream Chaser tiles are approximately 10 by 10 inches, while the tiles that were on the shuttle were about 6 by 6. SNC TPS engineers utilize a room temperature vulcanizing RTV silicone, which can withstand high temperature to keep those tiles bonded to the vehicle at all times. The bonded tiles are tested by a pulling mechanism to avoid the issues of the tiles falling off. In another process, NASA tweeted mentioning teamwork makes the Dream Chaser work. The first joint training simulation for NASA and Sierra spaceflight controllers happened earlier this month. The teams practiced operations for the new Dream Chaser spacecraft to fly to the space station. Sierra Space replied, highlighting, Our team enjoyed working with NASA flight operations teams preparing for the upcoming Dream Chaser CRS-2 cargo mission. For the next step, Sierra Space will ship it to the Kennedy Space Center for integration onto the Vulcan rocket with a launch tentatively planned for early 2023. As of right now, Vulcan is scheduled to have its first launch in the coming months. Assuming everything goes perfectly, its second ever mission will be with Dream Chaser Tenacity as a payload. This is the first of six cargo deliveries planned under a NASA cargo contract awarded after the commercial crew disappointment in 2014. In parallel, Sierra is refining the design for a crew variant now scheduled to debut in the mid-2020s. I got to thinking about it and said, you know, it's almost better to do cargo first, recalled Lindsay, the Sierra senior vice president who oversees Dream Chaser development. Because of the commonality between the cargo and crewed version, we'll have a flight-proven vehicle before the crewed variant carries humans. From a risk standpoint, that makes me feel a lot better, actually. Sierra plans to build a fleet between 10 and 15 Dream Chasers by 2030, although the breakdown between cargo and crew variants is still to be determined. Along with the six cargo flights for NASA, plans call for cargo and crew Dream Chasers to ferry supplies and passengers to the Orbital Reef Space Station that Sierra and Blue Origin plan to erect in low Earth orbit by 2027. 
Sierra Space has also discussed making a version of Dream Chaser for national security missions, but offered few specifics about how it would be different from the cargo or crew version. There's been speculation it would have capabilities similar to the U.S. Space Force X-37B space plane, whose missions have been largely shrouded in secrecy. All these missions are perfectly possible because Dream Chaser has a lot of potential. In theory, the Dream Chaser space plane is a multi-mission vehicle capable of supporting a variety of LEO needs. Most importantly, designed for high reusability, the vehicle reduces overall cost, providing quick turnaround between missions. The ability to lift off on top of multiple launch vehicles and land in a wide variety of runways makes Dream Chaser a flexible option for reliable transportation. After leaving the space station, the Dream Chaser cargo system also offers disposal services via the Shooting Star transport vehicle. Once separated from Dream Chaser, Shooting Star burns up safely in Earth's atmosphere. With the help of the Shooting Star service module, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, and that includes food, water, supplies, and science experiments, and returns to Earth. Dream Chaser can return critical cargo at less than 1.5 grams using a gentle runway landing. NASA currently receives ISS cargo shipments from SpaceX and Northrop Grumman. SpaceX's Dragon capsule is designed to send cargo back to Earth while Northrop Grumman's Cygnus burns up naturally in the atmosphere. The shuttle-shaped Dream Chaser will be another alternative to these capsules. In addition, Dream Chaser is 30 feet or 9 meters long, roughly one-fourth the total length of the Space Shuttle Orbiter, and it can carry up to seven crew members. The crewed version of Dream Chaser is approximately 85% common to the cargo system, limiting primary changes to windows, environmental control, and life support systems. In addition, an integral main propulsion system is available for abort capability and major orbital maneuvers. It can also be customized for both domestic and international customers via vehicle configuration, launch site, destination, landing site, duration, and a host of other vehicles. The company has entered into agreements with multiple international space agencies. Together, they're developing technologies, applications, and missions for Dream Chaser-based space systems. However, after all, it first needs to launch and demonstrate that it's capable of what it says. Wishing all the best for them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.